Hello people, in this video let us look at this case, okay. Um, this is uh, Mr. Sampat, a 50 year old male, okay. And uh, he is class 2 social socio-economic class. He presented with, look at this chief complaint guys, severe headache associated with blurring vision since 5 days. He has nothing else, okay. He is a known smoker. So, we are telling you the positive things. So, he is a smoker. He has come with severe complaints of, complaints of severe headache which worsens on activity, right. And he has associated blurring of vision since 5 days. Okay, and lot of negative history given here. Now, let us move on. His mother died of myocardial infarction, okay. Uh, that is family history. There is some family history present here. Then the average 2 BP reading in his right arm. In his right arm, they measured the BP and the average of the 2 BP is 164 by 100. Please mark this. This is what is the clue here for you. 160 by 100, okay. He is uh, obese, okay. He is obese. After the visit, he was made to measure BP at his home and he returns after one month. The average BP from multiple home readings and clinic readings is 180, 160 by 98. So, this is what you have to focus on. His blood pressure average is what? Over multiple readings, 160 by 98. His cholesterol, total cholesterol is this. LDL cholesterol they have given. HDL they have given. Triglycerides they have given. Okay, now you have to come to a conclusion. What do you think it is? So, as you are seeing here, the blood pressure is very high. Total cholesterol is high. Triglycerides are high. His uh, He's obese. His mother has died of myocardial infarction and by looking at his symptoms here of headache and blurring of vision, again these are because of high blood pressure, isn't it? So, what is your diagn diagnosis? Classify the same, you have to see the classification of the hypertension, enlist the risk factors, okay, w uh, which level of prevention has failed and national health program related to this condition. Very uh, quickly we will go through this, okay. So, it is a case of essential hypertension. Now, what do you mean by essential hypertension? What is essential hypertension? So, essential hypertension, look at the statement here. What is essential hypertension? That means it is primary hypertension. There is no uh, secondary cause, okay. People just develop it without any other cause, okay. So, essential hypertension is primary hypertension. It does not have a known secondary cause. That is essential hypertension. Now, here um, they have asked you to classify it, right. Now, classify it. How do you classify it? You have uh, here this guy has 160 and uh, what is the diastolic? Diastolic was 98. So, somewhere here stage 1 hypertension, stage 2 hypertension, somewhere he is in almost in this border, right? So, look at the classification of hypertension. You have normal, pre-hypertension, stage 1 hypertension and stage 2 hypertension. So, normal is uh, less than 180, uh, 120 by 80, you know standard, right? 120 by 80 less than that. Uh, it will be, this is hypertension classification, pay, pay attention here. Then you have pre-hypertension. Pre-hypertension just add the next 10 numbers, okay. 120 to 139, that's it. Then uh, stage 1 will be 140. Then stage, this is actually 140, right, to 159. Then here you have 160. So remember, this guy is somewhere borderline between stage 1 and stage 2. Enlist the risk factors for the above mentioned condition. For the above mentioned condition, the risk factors. Okay, let us look at answer for this one. So, there are non-modifiable risk factors and modifiable risk factors. You know this. So, non-modifiable means whatever that guy does, he cannot change those things. Like age, higher age, like for men above 45 uh, years of age, he, it will be a non-modifiable risk factor. Women are protected because of estrogen. So, they will, uh, up till menopause, they will have, uh, they will not have risk of hypertension. So, males are at higher risk and after menopause, females risk increases. Family history also matters. Here you have seen the mother uh, of this person has uh, myocardial infarction. So, history of myocardial infarction or sudden death among parents, first degree relatives, that could be a family history. Genetic factors like uh, monozygotic twins have high risk, it seems, of hypertension. Ethnicity, black, uh, blacks they are saying have uh, high risk to hypertension. So, we have looked at the non-modifiable risk factors. Now, let us look at the modifiable risk factors. What can this guy do in life to reduce his hypertension, to reduce his blood pressure? Uh, he can make sure that uh, he does not have dyslipidemia, right? Uh, cholesterol control, right? Obesity, make sure that you have. So, he has to maintain a waist hip ratio. So, in this case, uh, let us see what waist hip ratio is. Let us understand. This is what the textbook says. Waist hip ratio. So, where is the waist? Here is the waist and where is the hip? Here is the hip. 
so waist hip ratio what do you think it should be if waist is actually looking smaller than the hip so this number will be less than 1 what do you say so what is waist it is the midpoint between the lower rib cage lower border of rib cage and iliac crest okay fine and it is very closely uh, related with bmi and waist hip ratio obviously waist hip ratio waist will be related so basically what they are saying here is men <clears throat> men who have waist circumference greater than 102 women with waist circumference greater than 88 they all have some problem basically waist hip ratio greater than 1 in men and greater than 0.85 in women indicates abdominal fat accumulation i think we can all measure now and see what we have waist hip ratio okay so basically in centimeter they are taking and they are measuring waist circumference for men greater than 102 is again risk right so this is also bad risk men waist greater than 102 men with waist circumference greater than 102 and uh, men greater than one okay let's only focus on men here because this is a problem for men in this problem right okay you got it right so weight hip ratio greater than one in men is high whr indicates abdominal fat accumulation okay got it right so that is waist hip ratio we finished this so modifiable he can modify this risk central obesity waist hip ratio he should be able to modify high salt intake he should not have seven to eight gram per day is actually high so let us uh, see what is right see they are saying low sodium intake has been found to lower the blood pressure so you should take less sodium okay look at this you should adopt dash in eating plan dash what is dash we will come to that look at the explanation diet rich in fruits vegetables low fat diet low fat dairy products reduced content of saturated fat and total fat that is dash you should adopt dash eating plan dietary sodium reduction sodium reduction intake also he has to reduce right this is what we told here these two before that we talked about weight reduction bmi he has to maintain central obesity that is weight his waist hip ratio he should reduce right all that we looked at further we will look at modifiable factors this dash full form you have to learn okay diet foods for diet foods diet foods for high blood pressure high blood pressure what is as it's dietary approaches to stop hypertension dietary approaches to stop hypertension so what they should eat fruits vegetables low fat foods and uh, reduce content of saturated fat and total fat just look at this table it's very nice actually this table says what if you do you can reduce uh, hypertension more let us see dash eating plan 8 to 14 mm you can reduce weight reduction 5 to 20 mm per 10 kg weight loss sodium if you reduce in your food 2 to 8 millimeter of mercury pressure you can reduce so uh, dietary sodium uh, exactly how to reduce they have not written here salt intake itself will reduce sodium isn't it in this table what else you have physical activity alcohol you should moderate moderation of alcohol consumption okay physical activity and moderation of alcohol consumption is the other two things in this table let's go back where were we we were in modifiable risk factors so dyslipidemia central obesity high salt intake then uh, decreased intake of dietary fiber will be a risk okay tobacco alcohol will be a risk we told already if he reduces alcohol that will be good physical inactivity also we told you then psychosocial factors like this all this you have to bring your mind under control depression anxiety social isolation stress yeah be happy with yourself then you can find the world happy right first we should be happy with our own selves uh, then what is this uh, common in both high and low social econo socioeconomic status so hypertension is there in low and high ex socioeconomic status so you're rich or poor you will still have hypertension uh, that's bad right uh, okay actually low socioeconomic status let us say they are actually having more physical activity but still they are going to have hypertension is it okay according to what is written here both um, low and high uh, socioeconomic status will have hypertension if you are taking oral contraceptive pills you can have hypertension then if you are exposed to noise vibration high temperature humidity right high temperature is what they mean here what do you see all these are modifiable factors go to a cool and calm place with low noise don't take too much of oral contraceptive pills all these are modifiable 
So we have looked at non-modifiable and modifiable. Now let's go to the third question that was there in this. Uh, according to you, which level of prevention has failed and why? See prevention, uh, we have what primordial prevention, primary prevention, secondary prevention and tertiary prevention. Primordial means risk factor is present. So yes, primordial has failed. Primary, he already got hypertension. So uh, primary also failed. What do you think secondary has failed or not? I feel secondary is not failed because he still didn't get a myocardial infarction or anything. What do you say? Um, his mother died of myocardial infarction. He is already at stage 1 to stage 2 hypertension. He has high cholesterol. Okay. <clears throat> is it this something that he cannot reverse at all? By the list given, it looks like he can reverse. So this is more like a secondary prevention according to me. What do you say people? Okay, let's go to the third question. Mention the national health program related to this condition. See, national health program related to this condition will be national program for prevention and control of cancer, uh, something cardiovascular disease and stroke. What comes here? Cancer ke baad hypertension. Oh no, it's diabetes. Okay, so D is diabetes. National program for prevention and control of cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases and stroke. This is the national program. Look at this. Directorate General of Health Services, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. There is a national program called National Program for Prevention and Control of Cancer, Diabetes, Cardiovascular Diseases and Stroke. Okay, these are non-communicable diseases. So what are the objectives you can see here? What is the strategy? What activities they are going to do? Some newer initiatives, program infrastructure, performance. A lot of information is there guys, you can go and look at it. As of now, you just need to know one thing. National program for prevention and control of cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disease and stroke. This is for non-communicable disease, right? So guys, let's just look at some points on hypertension. Some more points on hypertension from textbook. So basically, it is a chronic condition, right? Um, and it can cause coronary artery disease, stroke and other vascular complications, all right? It is the commonest, uh, you know, cause, it will cause cardiovascular disorder. Causes cardiovascular disorder. So secondary hypertension means the causes can be something like um, kidney, adrenal gland, right? Tumors of adrenal gland. So all these you can know. Congenital narrowing of iota, toxemias of pregnancy. So here you can see tracking of blood pressure, how it's going high and high with time. So hypertension will follow, it will follow iceberg phenomena. So if you have an iceberg here, right, and under the water you have so much of the iceberg that you can't see. What you can see on top, some hypertension cases will be there, but a lot of the population will have hypertension. That is iceberg phenomena. Okay, so did you understand the hypertension, its classification, what uh, it is, etc. Causes, modifiable, non-modifiable, risk factors, etc, etc, national program, bye-bye.